A level 1 Rattata can beat even a level 100 Mewtwo, but there are other deep cut Pokemon gimmicks too, that even experienced players won't know. Maybe you haven't heard of the Gen 6 Boom Burst gimmick or the legendary level 85 Chansey, but we'll get to those later. Focus Sash Endeavor Quick Attack Rattata With a Focus Sash, you live any attack on 1 HP and you endeavor to lower your opponent's HP to your HP, which is 1. Then on the next turn, you use Quick Attack to outspeed Mewtwo and get that knockout. That is the most famous example of a Pokemon gimmick, a strategy that isn't generally good but can work well with a surprise. Actually, do me a favor. When you finish this video, comment and tell me how many of these gimmicks you didn't know beforehand. First up, we have Whirlpool Dracovish, a very interesting gimmick because Dracovish is well known as being one of the strongest Pokemon of all time. With its choice banded Ficious Rend and strong jaw ability, it literally will KO anything. As a result, people had to come up with whatever strategy they could think of to defend against it. Some of the strategies were pretty straightforward, like using Water Absorb Seismitoad. But one popular strategy was to use Toxopex with maximum physical defense and Baneful Bunker to poison Dracovish. Toxopex is one of the few Pokemon that can naturally hold on versus the mighty Pokemon. That's why, as a gimmick, some Dracovish started using Protective Pads, Whirlpool, Psychic Fangs, Vicious Rend to beat Toxapex. It would Whirlpool as Toxapex switches in to trap it and get residual damage, and then attack it with Psychic Fangs with the protection of Protective Pads. Instead of getting poison, Dracovish now turns Toxapex from an enemy into fodder. Is it actually good? Well, it does do the job of beating Toxapex, but it also means you're not using Choice Banded Ficious Rend anymore. Gimmicks generally aren't reliable. If they were, they wouldn't be a gimmick. They'd be a standard moveset instead. But I can guarantee a bit of quality control for the gimmicks here. They're going to be interesting, they're going to be at least okay, and they do do what they're trying to accomplish. But before we continue, first a word from our sponsor. Managing a YouTube channel while trying to figure out what you want from life can be overwhelming. It's a constant juggle between your online presence and real life responsibilities. That can lead to feeling burned out, unsure, and struggling to find balance. It's tough, but remember, it's essential to take care of your mental health just as you do your physical health. A lot of people can relate to that struggle to find balance. It's what I personally go through as well. That's why I'm introducing you to today's video sponsor, BetterHelp, an incredible online resource that can help you take control of your happiness and your mental health. If you're serious about making a positive change, click on the link below to get started. BetterHelp connects you with licensed therapists who provide unbiased advice. The impartiality is invaluable. You can discuss your issues without any bias, unlike talking to friends and family. That's a very big difference. These therapists are solely focused on helping you identify and address your problems, offering actionable steps to resolve them. BetterHelp has a network of over 30,000 licensed therapists ensuring you get the right fit for your needs. You can change therapists at no additional cost until you find the right match. Getting started is simple. Click the link below this video or visit betterhelp.com slash and they'll match you with the most suitable therapist within 48 hours or less in most cases. You can then schedule therapy sessions at your convenience, whether it's over the phone, through chat, or via video, although I do recommend video the most. Everyone can benefit from therapy, so don't neglect it. Join the over 4 million people who have used BetterHelp to start living a happier, healthier life. Click the link below this video for 10% off your first month of therapy. In Generation 3 is well known as being one of the best defensive Pokemon in the game with the coveted Steel typing and a large defense stat. However, it has one problem. Magnet Pull Magneton. Magneton can trap Skarmory with its ability and then easily knock it out with Thunderbolt. That's why players developed a gimmick moveset called YOLO Skarmory, where instead of using Skarmory as a defensive Pokemon, you use it as an offensive one. You max out Skarmory's attack and speed and give it hidden power ground. Then, when Magneton tries to trap you, you turn the tables and instead knock out Magneton with a 4 times super effective hidden power ground, which was a physical move back in Generation 3. Next, we have Trick, Ring Target, plus Regieleki. Regieleki is the fastest Pokemon in the game and is also incredibly strong. However, it is completely shut down by the ground type. 
The strategy back in Generation 8 was to trick a ring target onto the opposing team's ground type Pokemon. For example, ring target trick Jirachi easily baits in a ground type as they look to punish Jirachi's steel type. You surprisingly trick them the ring target and now your Regieleki can win the game. Very easy, very straightforward. The only problem is forcing your opponent to use their ground type versus your trick Pokemon. If your opponent simply uses a different Pokemon to deal with Jirachi, then the strategy doesn't work. The next gimmick involves Kofagrigus and Slacking. You have a Kofagrigus take a physical attack from a Pokemon. Kofagrigus' mummy ability now spreads to the opponent. Kofagrigus does what it wants to do and then eventually faints, and now you go to Slacking. When your opponent switches out of Slacking, you use the move Pursuit to always attack that Pokemon. Now, their mummy spreads to Slacking, and Slacking loses its negative ability. You go on to try and win the game with your mummy slacking. Dragon Dance Mega Charizard Y is an interesting gimmick. Charizard Y is a special attacker unlike Charizard X who is a physical attacker. But you don't gain anything by boosting your attack with Dragon Dance, and that's exactly why it's brilliant. Before you Mega you use a Dragon Dance and your opponent sees that Dragon Dance and realizes, oh, they must be Dragon Dance Mega Charizard Y, a physically attacking Pokemon. Accordingly, they switch in their high physical defense Pokemon. That's when you reveal you aren't Charizard X, but you're actually Charizard Y, purely to lure that physically defensive Pokemon. Next we have Block Trappers. These are Pokemon that unexpectedly use the move Block to stop an opponent from switching. Then they use setup moves like Calm Mind and Rest. Ordinarily, a slow boosting strategy wouldn't work as well. A good opponent will react quickly before it gets out of hand. But the idea is that you unexpectedly trap a Pokemon that can't touch you and your opponent can't react anymore. The best example is Trapper Zydog. Zygarde 10% ordinarily uses the move Thousand Arrows as a strong ground type attack that also hits flying type Pokemon. But Trapper Zydog instead uses Thousand Waves which traps the opponent. A Pokemon like Hippowdon whose physical defense is great might easily switch in expecting a thousand arrows but then gets trapped. Then it becomes totally helpless as Zydog goes for Coil to boost its defense, Rest to heal and stop Toxic, and then finally Scale Shot to boost speed and knock out the Hippo. The most evil block strategy is Block, Spite, Toxapex. Toxapex literally runs your Pokemon out of every move it has until it faints from struggle. These are not consistent strategies because they're what's known as a matchup fish. If you fight the correct team, like a Hippowdon team when you use Trapper Zydog, it's great. But when you fight any other team, you end up with an inferior Pokemon. Next is Anger Point Strategies. Anger Point is an ability that maximizes your attack, but only if you get critical hit. That's impossible to control unless you use 100% critical hit moves. There are a variety of variations, but one example is simply using Anger Point Pokemon against Urshifu, whose signature move always gets a critical hit. Instead of using the overall better ability like Intimidate, you give your Tauros Anger Point and switch in against a move like Wicked Blow. Or you get more elaborate and use Anger Point on yourself in a double battle. For example, you can use Frost Breath on your own Tauros Fire. Next is Z Me First in the Little Cup format. You'll be forgiven if you don't know what Me First does, let alone Z Me First. Me First is a move that copies the move that your opponent is about to use and uses it at 1.5 times power. Z Me First is even more deadly because not only does it copy the move at 1.5 times power, but it turns the opponent's move into a Z move for you. Then it also doubles your speed as well. Mianfu would use this move to protect itself from attacks. For example, if a Snubble wants to easily knock you out with Play Rough, instead you destroy that Snubble with a Z Twinkle Tackle and double your speed as well. Maybe a Vullaby wants to knock you out with Brave Bird, instead you Supersonic Sky Strike first and one it KO them. And at that point in time, Baton Pass was still legal so that when you're done, you can Baton Pass that speed to a different Pokemon. It was gimmicky because if you use a Z-move, you can't use Eviolite, and if your opponent knows the strategy, they can instead use a status move to avoid getting copied. That Snubble can feel that something's not right and use Thunder Wave instead. Overall, a very deadly gimmick, but it does rely on Surprise Factor. 
The Global Challenge is a big VGC ladder tournament, and last year the Palafin core was dominating the meta. Palafin naturally matches up well versus Dondozo because it can easily fit Haze into its move slot to shut it down. Palafin was both a common Pokemon at the time and a Pokemon you always bring to the Dondozo matchup. People started using fake Dozo Giri. They would instead use the ordinarily inferior Storm Drain Tatsugiri. Tatsugiri is a very mediocre Pokemon on its own, but it's not that bad when you can guarantee that one of your opponent's four Pokemon will be Palafin, because Tatsugiri completely invalidates Palafin. Yes, you're using a mediocre Pokemon, but you're also turning the game into a 4 versus 3. The surprise factor made that a usable strategy, and unlike other gimmicks here, it performed well at the time through sheer surprise factor. But if your opponent knew you were using Storm Drain Tatsugiri, they probably wouldn't bring Palafin into the matchup. The Dozo Giri situation forces Palafin to be brought to the battle. Durand has the ability Truant, which is terrible, but it also has an uncommon move in Entrainment, which gives that ability to the opponent. You Truant Entrainment and try to find a way to faint. Then you go to Dugtrio to trap the Pokemon with Truant. You alternate Hone Claws and Protect and boost your stats all the way to the maximum and then get an easy win by outspeeding and one-hit KOing everything with Earthquake, Stone Edge, and a Focus Sash, just in case there's a Pokemon faster than you. It could be argued that Ryulu is actually better than Lucario in Generation 5. The reason is the Prankster copycat strategy. Roar, a move that makes your opponent switch, ordinarily has a negative 6 priority, which means that it always moves last. But Copycat has plus 1 priority from Prankster and it uses the last move on the field, which means it can copy the Roar from the previous turn. By using Roar and then Copycat next turn, you now have a priority Roar, and with hazards like Stealth Rock and Spikes, you can infinitely use Copycat Roar to switch your opponents out and defeat them through hazard damage alone. It's painfully annoying, but gets stopped if your opponent happens to have a faster priority move like Protect. Similarly, there's another Copycat strategy in Generation 8 with Copycat Shell Smash. Pokemon Sword and Shield introduced a new item in Eject Pack that switches you out if you drop a stat. You Shell Smash with Eject Pack to switch out. Your opponent gets completely confused. Why would you boost your stats only to switch out and remove all of them? But with your next Pokemon, you use Copycat so they can Copycat Shell Smash. Basically, any Pokemon who has Copycat now has access to Shell Smash too. The Move Assist can call any of your teammates' moves and use them. But there are certain moves it can't call like Protect or Dig. What if you create a team that literally only has one callable move? Then every time you use Assist, you always call that one move. One of the best moves from a damage point of view is Boom Burst, an incredibly strong move that not a lot of Pokemon get. You have one Boom Burst Pokemon and five Pokemon who know Assist. And then you fill the rest of the team with filler moves like Protect or Dig or basically anything uncallable. Now congrats, you have 6 Boom Burst Pokemon on your team. You ideally want one Pokemon with Scrappy on your team as well, that way you can hit Ghost type Pokemon. But overall, you have 6 Pokemon using one of the strongest moves in the game. Did you know that in Generation 2, Blissey would use the move Present? It's because the move is glitched. Ordinarily, Present is a move that either does damage to the opponent or it heals them. Unreliable, right? You don't want to risk healing them. But in Generation 2, there's a glitch with the damage formula. When you use Present and do damage, the opponent's defense stat gets replaced by the index number of the secondary type of the attacker. The index number of a pure normal type Pokemon is 0. So the opponent's defense stat becomes 0 and then 1 because you can't have a 0 stat. Also, the attacker's level gets replaced by the target's secondary type. Most special attacking types have a high index number, for example Ice is 25. And finally, the attack stat is replaced by 10 times the effectiveness of the move, which is 10 times 1 for a neutral attack. So for example, if you use Present versus a Cloister, you are level 25 with 10 attack against a Cloister with 1 defense. Obviously, you're going to do a ridiculous amount of damage. On the other hand, if you attacked a Snorlax, you'd be a level 1 Pokemon with 10 attack against a Snorlax with 1 defense. And you wouldn't do as much damage because a Pokemon's level plays a role in the damage calculator. 
Trick Room is a powerful strategy in double battles. One way to combat Trick Room is to use a Pokemon with Trick Room and Imprison. Imprison stops the opponent from using a move that you have. In this case, because you have Trick Room, the opponent can't use Trick Room anymore. Trick Room Imprison can itself be called a gimmick, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a gimmick that counters that gimmick. You lead with your Trick Room Pokemon and Ursaluna. Your opponent goes for their Imprison strategy, but you use Roar on Ursaluna to make that Pokemon switch out. The Imprison effect gets broken and now you get up Trick Room without a problem. Incredibly niche and you have to somehow know your opponent is going to use the Imprison gimmick, but that just might be the funniest gimmick I've seen in a long time. There's a gimmick involving bringing a level 85 Chansey to a level 100 Generation 1 battle. The reason is because there's a bug in the game where Pokemon cannot use Recover if their HP is 255 less than their maximum HP. When Chansey uses Seismic Toss three times in a row at level 85, it does 255 damage. That means you can deny recovery on a lot of Pokemon. If you deny their recovery, they become a lot easier to handle. Obviously, the drawback is that your Chansey is now level 85. In my opinion, these are the most interesting gimmicks. Did I miss anything? Let me know down below.